Hi, this is Sean, and you're watching Try Accept, where I share tips on cracking the machine learning interview. In this video, we will answer the systems design question, build a system which can serve a large language model to millions of users. Essentially, we are building a service like ChatGPT or Claude. Specifically, we are building the model serving layer to efficiently handle user requests from millions of users. Typically, the limiting factor for these types of applications is the large amount of computational resources required to run a large language model, in particular, one that is required to serve millions of users. The full architecture of these systems is complex, so today we will focus on what happens when a user sends a prompt and how the model generates a response in a scalable manner. If you want to explore the full system end to end in depth, go to tryaccept.io to join our waitlist. We will be making a fully interactive series covering this use case and don't forget to subscribe to support the channel. So here is the target architecture. At a very high level, we're going to conceptualize it in five layers. The API gateway, request processing layer, orchestration layer, model inference layer, and the safety and monitoring layer. On to the requirements. As per usual, you should structure your requirements into functional and non-functional requirements. Functional covering what the application does and non-functional covering performance-based metrics. First, the functional requirements. User request handling. The system must accept queries via APIs and web interfaces. It must also be able to maintain session context for multi-turn conversations. Next, model inference. The system must invoke the language model for text generation. It must also support multiple model versions and switch between them dynamically. Finally, we have response formatting and delivery. Providing real-time or near real-time responses to users is a must and it must be able to handle post-processing tasks such as model output moderation. Next, non-functional requirements, performance and latency. We need to ensure low latency responses and we also need to optimize model inference and data transfer for minimal delays. Next, we need to ensure reliability and availability so an uptime of 99.9% .9 or higher is required. So the true list of requirements would be far longer than this, but in an interview, this is more than sufficient. I will present the architecture from the perspective of an incoming request. When a request arrives, it first encounters the API gateway, which serves as the entry point to this system for both queries via APIs and web interfaces. The API gateway manages critical functions such as authentication, rate limiting, and load balancing. For this layer, we could use AWS API gateway, leveraging AuthO for identity verification. To efficiently manage throttling and rate limiting, we could implement a Redis-backed token bucket algorithm. In simple terms, each user is allocated a set number of tokens where each request consumes one token. If a user exhausts their tokens, further requests are throttled until tokens are replenished at a fixed rate. I will make a full video on throttling soon. Now the request has passed the API gateway and has entered into the request processing layer. This layer will serve two major purposes, request routing and request validation. To handle request routing, we will implement engine X. This distributes incoming traffic across the system components based on request type load, conditions, and routing rules. This ensures efficient utilization of our request validator. Our validation service will need to be a custom service. This could be done in many ways, but in our case, we will implement a REST API using Fast API that leverages Pydantic for request verification. This service will verify two primary areas, 
input formats and parameters, as well as request size and structure. It will further normalize inputs to ensure consistency. Finally, it will assign the priority queue the request is to enter. Once our request has been normalized, the validation service will enforce simple prioritization based on whether the request is coming from an enterprise paying user or a free standard user. Based on this condition, the request will be entered into one of two queues, priority for paying users and standard for free users. In our case, we are an enterprise paying user, so our request will enter the priority queue. It is now ready to be passed on to the orchestration layer. The orchestration layer is the core of any large language model serving architecture. It is responsible for coordinating all aspects of the request processing after the initial validation and implements intelligent decisions about where and how a request should be handled. As just discussed, we have a queue which dictates the order in which requests are serviced. This will sit in between the request processor, which will send requests to the queue, and the request orchestrator, which will read from the queue. In order to orchestrate the millions of requests coming from this queue, which includes our request, we will implement a request orchestrator using Kubernetes. It will conduct a number of tasks. First, it will analyze the task and decompose it into its relevant steps. It will allocate resources for each step. And finally, it will conduct adaptive processing. We will need to get high level and talk from a business perspective to discuss an example. So let's compare our simple short context query with a real-time interactive programming query. So first, task analysis and decomposition. Identifies the short context query as a small, simple, factual task making this a high throughput, low complexity case. The orchestrator would then create a very simple workflow enabling fast responses with low computational requirements. In contrast, for the live coding task, it would be identified as a time sensitive and high complexity task. As a result, the orchestrator would create a lightweight streaming workflow enabled for quick responses However, the computational resources here will be higher. Next, resource allocation. The short context query is assigned to a quick response cluster. If we were Claude, we would assign this query to a haiku cluster, their fast response models. In contrast, the coding task would be considered a high complexity question. As a result, it will be assigned to a high capability cluster. If we were Claude, we would assign this query to Sonnet 3.7. Finally, adaptive processing. The short context query will likely not need adaptive processing. The short context question is a simple question that results in a small token output with little room for feedback. In contrast, for the coding task, we expect adaptive processing to be required. In the case where the user gives negative feedback, the orchestrator can quickly reroute the queries to a more capable model. For example, from 3.5 Sonnet to 3.7. Or if the user activates another conversation turn, we can quickly query the model. So now the orchestration layer has defined the request, resource allocation, and whether or not the current request requires adaptive processing and querying a pre-existing model. Our request will be now passed onto the model inference layer, or in essence, the large language model. The model inference layer is where the actual large language model computation happens. It's the computational engine of the entire system. This layer has a number of core components. Once again, we will have a coordinator, this time an inference coordinator. We will have model inference clusters, which are optimized GPUs used to run the model. We will implement a model registry used to store the various models. And finally, we will implement a model tracking and tuning service.
When our request enters the model inference layer, it will firstly reach the inference coordinator, which will read in the requirements set by the orchestration layer, and based on this will manage the deployment and scaling of our services, specifically model versions and hardware resources such as GPUs. In our case, this coordinator will assign a fast response cluster of GPUs optimized to run the Haiku model the orchestrator selected. The coordinator will define the model the cluster is to read in from the model registry. In this case, it will read in the Haiku model. Our response will now be processed by the large language model. It will generate a response. I will not cover the internal model in this video, please refer to my series explaining individual models in order to understand the underlying machine learning algorithms. Finally, our model and our request and response will be analyzed by a service like weights and biases for observability regarding model metadata and performance metrics, which can then be used to optimize training parameters. So now our request has been processed by the model. Its output must now enter the safety and monitoring layer before it will reach the end user. The safety and monitoring layer provides content moderation. Currently, it has one service. The output filter would be implemented as a REST API. The model response would be sent to this service for analysis where it would either be approved or rejected. The underlying system for identifying whether a response meets content guidelines would be another lighter weight machine learning model. This service would also act as a monitoring layer for the output of the model, leveraging logging services such as Grafana for live reporting. So your homework in the comments is to expand on what model you could potentially use. For example, a support vector machine. I'm also asking you to detail how you would expand this to increase moderation for user inputs. I'll respond to everyone who answers. So now our request has entered the safety and monitoring layer. It has been approved. It will now make its way back to the end user. Let's zoom out for a moment. The model response will return to the orchestration layer and pass through the request orchestrator. It will enter into the API gateway layer, bypassing the request processing layer and be delivered to the client. So now you should be able to comfortably answer a 30 minute to one hour system design interview. This is Sean from tryaccept.io. I'll see you next time.